I love you. So by the time a lot of you are listening to this, you may know the outcome of head coach Jim Harbaugh. I currently do not. At this moment, I have no idea. I spent all day afternoon thinking my next head coach was going to be Jim Harbaugh and firmly believing that based on the news reports, talking to my friends in group text, visioning him on the sidelines, wearing purple. Oh gosh. Getting mad at referees. The fact that both him and his brother wear purple, all of these scenarios all afternoon only to read that now he's possibly or probably accepting a job in Miami with the dolphins. (sighs) My name is Travis. This is Trav talks. Uh, Football Talks Edition, and boy, oh boy, a lot to unpack. And starting with what I had just said, we don't know at this time where Harbaugh is going. As a Minnesota Vikings fan, let's go. Come on, buddy. Come make Prince proud. Please do it for us. If anyone can do it, it's you or someone else. Please give us hope. You're the best candidate for the job. You're the best candidate all season long for a head coaching position, please, please come to Minnesota. Um, I've heard stories that the reason he may even consider coming to Minnesota is because of the GM hire of uh, Adolfo Mensa. So maybe, I don't know, it it could be, I remember a couple years ago, this was a while back now, but Frank Gore for a cup of coffee was, in everyone's mind, a Philadelphia Eagle because he was ending his tenure with San Francisco. No one knew where he was going to go. And he ended up signing with the Colts and it was kind of a bait and switch. We all thought that, um, uh, Oh gosh, who was it? Uh, Josh McDaniels with the Patriots that we thought that he was a signed sealed and delivered deal with the Colts a couple years ago. And then they ended up going with Frank Reich which turned out to be great for them. But what I'm trying to say is that Vikings fans, if you're listening to this and the news hasn't broken yet, don't give up hope. We still have a chance at Harbaugh. And um, I mean, why not? Because do you really want to go to an organization that has done what they've done to, to Flores and with all the controversy with Tua? I mean, how do you even get Tua while having that head coach? You know what I mean? Like if that is the the conflict where uh, Flores never wanted to, uh, so shame on the Dolphins for choosing to dump the owner instead of the quarterback, whatever it is. But it, it just goes to show that the organization is potentially harder to work with than than the hires, in my opinion, and from what I can see, because this is an organization that also trusted. Adam Gase for however many years and they've been just burning through head coaches and not to mention too one of their interims Dan Campbell is now the head coach of the Lions and depending on who you ask he could be a a good commodity for the Lions for years to come depending on what happens they really are a team the Lions with are a team with no talent outside of a few skill position players and then Panay Sewell but I guess the point is, Harbaugh, I'm not giving hope up on you yet. It could still be a thing that he comes to Minnesota, but maybe we turn into the Colts and everyone wanted the McDaniels thing to happen and it ended up being Frank Reich. And I think if you ask most Colt fans, they will say we prefer to have our head coach that we have right now. I would. I like Frank Reich. So you need a quarterback, obviously. I don't think Carson Wentz is the guy, whether they want him to be the guy or not. I think he has to be the guy based on the contract and the money. If they were to cut him, they would lose more money, I think, than having him on the team. So I think they have to pretty much have him be in some quarter, some sort of rotation with the Colts. But uh, we'll cross our fingers and we'll see what happens with uh, with Harbaugh. And who knows, maybe he's a, a eight and nine coach. I don't know. I need something to get excited about. It's January, okay? Or February, depending on when you're listening to this. So enough of that. Um, the next thing that is just scorching in my head right now is two things that are tied hand in hand, and we'll talk about them separately. And the first is uh, Tom Brady retiring. 
and we'll get into the details of what that means in a minute. But also, in the same weekend that he's allegedly retiring, you have Joe Burrow taking his team to the AFC Championship and to the Super Bowl. I remember a second-year quarterback that did that once upon a time. So I, it, it just seems very poetic that Tom would hang it up around the same time that you have scorching quarterbacks like the aforementioned Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. There's just so many good young quarterbacks, and there's guys that we don't know what we have in them yet. Justin Fields, Mac Jones. Tom, I believe, could go for another however many years he wants. It sounds like he wants to go in peace so he can be a family man, and I don't blame him. Of course he should. And I'll get into more of my thoughts about that, but I just thought it feels so okay for Tom to go while we're having this emergence of these quarterbacks not being on the upswing, but on that tier. They're on that level. And how cool would it be if Tom Brady be the first player ever to retire and also go out as MVP? Plus, it's a big plus that he gets to be eligible for the Hall of Fame the same year as Ben Roethlisberger. Big Ben can look forward to that five years from now when... Uh, his Hall of Fame induction is overshadowed by Tom Brady. One last little nudge to Big Ben from Tom. That'll be fun. The story was that the news had, the news had broken that Tom was going to retire. And then a few hours later, the news had broke that, wait, Tom hasn't given any notice to the GM. No one close to him can confirm this. And, and basically Tom was like, guys, I haven't filed paper. I've no. A lot of people still think, including Adam Schefter, that this is all just a, I want to do it on my terms, but uh, it sounds like the the shoe has dropped. The shoe's dropped on Tom Brady. He's deciding to hang it up. 5,000 passing yards in his last season. No signs of slowing down whatsoever. I do think that if he were to come back, he would have a chance to win MVP or go to the Super Bowl again, but that's also Tom being Tom and possibly seeing the writing on the wall, which actually I take that back. I don't believe that at all. Tom isn't a guy who sees the writing on the wall and escapes. Tom's the guy who sees the writing on the wall and embraces how to fix it. You can't tell me that any of the receivers besides Randy Moss from New England were highly touted guys. They were all scouted for the most part or developed Edelman. Uh, for example, uh, Gronkowski. But Tom Brady, and I will explain more why I think he is the greatest quarterback of all time, but even if Tom were to stick around another year, they would find a way to keep some guys or maybe franchise tag uh, Godwin and put that team back together that financially they wouldn't be able to do that. And I know Tom knows that, and I'm not going to say that that's the reason why he's retiring. I do believe he wants to go out on his terms. He could play till he's 45. He probably will win MVP. Right now, it's like politically, it, right now, it feels politically circumstantial over who's going to get MVP because everyone hates Aaron Rodgers and his whole vaccination approach. And Tom Brady is beloved by a lot, hated by many as well. This guy could go off to be the the MVP who doesn't root for that. I think a lot of people actually do root for that. Nonetheless, it's very intriguing and they are two polar opposite people in a lot of ways, but, and what if Aaron Rodgers retires too? three quarterbacks going out at the same time, all getting inducted into Canton, Ohio five years from now at the same time. Wow. I, I mean, wrap your head around that for a second, but, um, at the time of this recording, it's actually halftime of the Niners and Rams. So um, I have a $10 bet with an old friend of mine <laughs> that the 49ers are going to win based on what I've said on my podcast. So um, him and I will just have a fun little wager. But I do want the Niners. I do. I want Debo to get his uh, his time to shine. It, it's been his season, and I really am rooting for him as a man. And as a fan of his in fantasy football and watching him play 
how is he not one of your favorite football players when you watch Debo Samuel? No matter where he is on the field, he is so fun to watch. Um, I'm a long, lifelong Minnesota Vikings fan, always will be, but I do believe it's important to also support and be a fan of the players you like, whether it be a fun personality or it be someone you like on the field. I do think it is fun to support those people. And fantasy football is a big caveat for that, too. Fantasy football is a major, major boost in what the NFL does for sales and viewers. It's a a really cool thing to see people get outside their comfort zone and not just necessarily root for one team, but they can root for other people on other teams. And I just like the toughness of of the Niners, and I like Elijah, Elijah Mitchell. George Kittle, Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously is a character, and he's, I got a lot to talk about with him too, but for the time being, um, I'll play a little transition music, and I'll see you guys after the Rams 49ers game. So I said I had a lot to say about Jimmy Garoppolo, and boy, do I have even more to say about him now. First and foremost, he is a character of a person. The guy goes out, he dates whoever he wants, he is a leader, he has every single guy standing up for him. Yes, his winning percentage is great, but we know what we see on the field with him, and he is not the greatest quarterback that... He's not even the one of the best quarterbacks in his division. He's not even in the top half of his own division. But he does win. He does have the support of his team. And really, what else can you ask for in a quarterback than those two things? Now, with all of that being said, what in the hell was that last play? Now, okay, let's resend that. Let's take it back. There was an Aaron Donald problem. There was an offensive line problem. Uh, not really an offensive line. I mean, yeah, it's it's everything. It's team sports, isn't it? I mean, it's the quarterback. It's the offensive. Let's go back. So what had happened was an exciting game between the Niners and the uh, the Rams. And my friend uh, Dan, he and I actually had a bet, $10.00. Just a gentleman's bet. I said on the podcast that the Niners are going to win, and they friggin' almost did. And I come on this podcast and I talk about what a character Jimmy Garoppolo is, and he goes out there and makes me look stupid. Uh, but what's funny is my friends and I are all group texting as Jimmy's getting ready to go down the field with a minute 46 left, and we're talking about how even if he wins the Super Bowl, he's going to get cut after the season's over because they sold the farm, the entire future for Trey Lance to move up into that three spot in the draft last year. So uh, sure enough, that series, he goes down, throws a terrible interception, game over. And in real time, we're all texting each other. Well, I guess uh, we don't need to wait to find out what's going to happen with Jimmy. He sort of went out there and sealed his own fate, which that's football. That happens. It's nothing less of who he is as an athlete, as a man, as a person. It really stinks. And I I wonder what would happen if Jimmy Garoppolo had the misfortune of being led by someone like Urban Meyer. Let's see what's made out of Jimmy then when he has no leadership and no system to support him and hold him up. Because I think Jimmy is an okay quarterback. We saw him make a lot of missed throws a lot of bad throws throws that were just wide open that he missed and sure he's not right but um, I hope for the man that he continues to get better and I don't know where he's going to be next season there is no way in my mind that he's in San Francisco but to my little joke earlier uh, Trey Lance (laughs) I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole of what Trey Lance have done a better job in that play I think he would have because he's a mobile quarterback. He's going to have a tendency to want to get out of the pocket, but you don't put a single quarterback in for a single play when the entire season is on the line. But I think that's why they invested so much in Trey Lance because Shanahan has a vision for what he wants to do with Lance. 
just like how he had a vision with Debo Samuel. And and speaking of Debo Samuel, I have to say, as the days and weeks and months have gone by, I have become an even bigger and bigger Debo Samuel fan. I think he is just such a phenomenal player that every time he touches the ball, you think to yourself, there's a legitimate chance that this could be the best play of the game because he is that electric. It's hard to even describe in audio form. You have to go back and watch. Just watch this game. This wasn't even his best game of this season. And you could say that he had a a quiet night. Not even a quiet night. He was involved a lot, but he didn't have some of the stats that he's had on some of his other games. And I just was rooting for him so hard because he's gone through injuries and he is one of those guys that fantasy players like myself have relied upon. And he really paid up in a big way as a middle round guy in fantasy drafts. Most people probably got him in the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth round somewhere there. And you could start him almost every single week. And you can see that the Niners have a vision for Debo Samuel and what they want to do with him. And it'll be interesting to see what they can do with him because I think Debo is a uh, a restricted free agent after this year. Let's see, he would have been a second round pick. So I think they can put a tender on him. But hopefully they have money to just pay the guy because he is worth every penny. And of course, I'm sure he's soon, as soon as he gets the money, Knock on wood, let's hope he can stay healthy. I guess it was pretty cool to see Odell Beckham Jr. embracing Debo Samuel on the bench after the game. I don't know what the relationship is between those two, but Debo was visibly upset. And instead of Odell going over there and celebrating with his teammates, he went over there and basically consoled Debo, which... There's that pessimistic side of me and a lot of others, I'm sure, that think, well, is that Odell just doing that to get cameras on him, or is that him being more of a a diva wide receiver? But I got to think, though, when we talk about all of these taunting plays and that it's in the heat of the moment and it's not necessarily aimed at someone objectively, that it's just, like we said, the heat of the moment – and you're in the moment. And I think that's, I'd like to think that's what happened with Odell and Debo. And maybe they have a real friendship. A lot of these guys have real long friendships that go across the league from team to team, position to position. And it's heartbreaking for Debo to see him go out like that. He had a really nasty shot in the middle of the game too. I screamed in the living room. I was very worried Seeing the replay, it looked like he got the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully, there's no internal injuries. He was running a crossing route and got picked off by the defender. Never saw him coming. Got the wind knocked out of him. No flag on the on the play. It looked clean. It was just two guys colliding, and Debo got the worst of it. But he was on the field later in the game, so he's always hurt. He's always been hurt. I really do hope for the sake of him that he can – have a sustainable career and stay upright for a little while longer. But let's digress off of Debo after I share this one last fact about Debo Samuel. His name isn't even Debo. His name is Tyshawn. And I guess, like, listen to this for a second. Stop listening to this and then go watch Debo Samuel highlights. Then come back and listen to this story. Because Debo Samuel, Tyshawn Samuel... Hasn't been called Tyshawn since he was like 12 because I guess he just would walk into a room and take whatever he would want. He was a little bit of a bully and the name just stuck of Debo and he hadn't even seen the movie Friday yet. And his dad just started calling him Debo because he would walk into a room and I guess that was his personality. But as it's been explained to me, he (laughs) is no longer a bully. (laughs) He's not nine years old anymore. He's a man. As some would call him Debo Manuel. But I uh, I think this is one of those situations where when you find a guy you like that's on another team and you want to support them, you 
find their charity or whatever it is that they like to support and either share it on social media or get a fundraiser going. In fact, that's what I was saying with uh, Jim Harbaugh is we need to get a, a Vikings, uh, some sort of GoFundMe or charity a fundraiser where we can show Jim Harbaugh, come to Minnesota, we're hospitable. <laughs> Don't go to Miami. Come here, please, because our income tax and amazing weather is where you want to be, please. So let's all donate to whatever Jim Harbaugh charity is, and then he'll see the influx in social media and be like, yeah, I really think that's the place I need to go. So anyway, we're off track again. Uh, But after you have watched those YouTube videos of Debo Samuel and you hear that story of him being a bully, that is the biggest bully I've ever seen on a football field. Like I said, every time he touches the football, you think it's going to be the play of the game. And he is never denied on the first he had a guy jump on his back and he ran a couple extra yards to get the first down. Like those are things that don't show up on the stat sheet as Mel Kiper and others would say, but we're moving on to the Super Bowl, and there will be a podcast just talking about predictions, what we think will happen. I'm sure the Bengals offensive line will be a conversation. Matthew Stafford and his journey, all of those things and more, I'm sure will be a storyline. I know I promised to talk more about Tom Brady and the fallout with what's happening with the retirement, but I think he, I mean, we might just need a Tom Brady shark week on Trav Talks because there are so many fun stats about Tom Brady. Like one, for example, that a lot of people have heard is that if you take his career and you cut it into three parts, each of those careers is Hall of Fame worthy. And it's true. And there's so many other stats that are like that. Not to mention every inquiry I put out there on social media, group texts with everybody. Hey, guys, doing a podcast, giving me a bunch of cool stats about Tom Brady, because really, like, you know, you could equate his passing yards to what it is from here to the moon, like fun stuff like that, you know. But what I'm trying to get at is these fun stats and everybody just wants to talk about deflating footballs and cheating and uh, (laughs) a bunch of other jokes that I'm not going to talk about. And it just goes to show the the culture of the Internet, people behind the the satire of who he is. And I think that comes with the territory. And I'm just as guilty as the next person. We've all made jokes about Tom Brady. But the reality is we're about to have a conversation of how great he really was, because I think it's best to reflect in real time. So we'll need to do a podcast talking about just Tom some of his stats, and we'll have to look back on seeing if this news is real. We still don't even know if it's 100% real, but we're also going to be doing some shows going over all the head coaching changes. There have been a lot of new head coaching changes announced just this week. Uh, The Raiders have a new head coach, so we'll get into all that next week. But for now, thanks again, guys, for listening. This has been another episode of Trav Talks. Bye. Hello.